Hello, this video is about the difference between three different types of linear advection scheme. There's a uh, flux form semi-Lagrangian, semi-Lagrangian and method of lines. These are numerical methods for solving the advection equation. Now the advection equation is d phi by dt, so phi is a variable that's changing, it might be a concentration of something, t is time, rate of change with time, plus um, the advection term, which is the divergence of the velocity field times that concentration is equal to zero. Uh, now, this form of the equations assumes that uh, phi is either density weighted or that the velocity field is divergence free. Um, now, there are, so there are, I'm going to talk about three different classes of methods to solve this. The first is uh, flux form semi-Lagrangian and then we've got a normal interpolating semi-Lagrangian and method of lines. There are so many different types of advection scheme and different categories. There's, so this doesn't, this doesn't cover a lot of things, for example. Some of these could be bounded or not bounded. Um, or implicit or explicit. Um, now, the uh, the flux form semi-Lagrangian schemes are a type of finite volume scheme. So uh, you will imagine that you you have grid boxes, which might be squares or cubes or other shapes, and you've got a, a, a mass of phi inside each grid box. And the, the rate of change of the this phi inside the grid box is determined by the uh, the fluxes that go in and out of in and out of that grid box. Um, so that to to work out how to calculate phi in terms of those fluxes, you discretize the linear advection equation, which I'll call one, uh, by applying Gauss's divergence theorem. So you integrate over this volume v, and you say that uh, the rate of change of uh, the total mass, which is phi times the volume. And then you represent the the divergence term by the sum uh, over the faces of phi at the face. Um, so that's the, the value of phi interpolated to the face multiplied by the outward pointing uh, normal vector at that face, s. And this s is outward pointing normal and has the the magnitude of s is the um, area or distance or length of the face equals zero. So the approx approximations come in because you have to estimate uh, these this phi at the face from surrounding values. Uh, so at the moment that is that's not flux form semi-Lagrangian. That's just the finite volume method. Um, to make this flux form semi-Lagrangian, uh, the the way that we estimate this fly at the phi at the faces is by working out the amount of mass that is that tr that um, travels through this face in one time step. Oh, now, um, so I, I'm going to discretize this finite volume scheme further, and I'm going to say, um, and I'm going to divide through by volume. The volume I'm assuming is fixed, so I've got phi at the new time step, minus phi at the old time step, divided by delta t, plus one over the volume times the sum over the faces, phi at the face times the area vector is equal to zero. So in order to um, go from the old time step n to the new time step, we need to find out, this is now flux form semi-Lagrangian, the amount of phi in an upstream that's gone through the face in one time step. So this between time step n and n plus one, this volume is going to flux through this face. And that'll, uh, so if we do that for all the faces, so we've got a wind like they're going like this, we do that for all the faces, the amount that, if the wind speed is that, nothing's gonna go through that face, something's gonna go through that face, a slightly different volume. Um, uh, 
uh, and use use these um, swept volumes or swept areas to calculate phi at the face. Um, there are other names for this, uh, as well as flux form semi-Lagrangian. This has been called um, forward in time or a Crowley scheme. There may be other other names that have been used for it. That is flux form semi-Lagrangian. So next I will talk about method of lines. Uh, for method of lines, um, well, I'll again write the advection equation discretized in time. So phi at n plus 1 uh, minus phi at n divided by delta t plus uh, the divergence of u times phi is equal to zero. And now for this, I'm not going to say how you calculate the divergence. It doesn't really matter. But um, method of lines um, I don't know why it's called this, but what it's what it is often used to mean is that you 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 have a a, a, temp a time stepping scheme to for to calculate this. So it might be a multi step scheme or a rung cutter scheme, and then you have a spatial discretization to calculate this. Um, and so uh, this, however you however you discretize the divergence in space. Um, there's going to be a number of different time levels. So, for example, if it's um, for if it's uh, Euler explicit uh, in time, you'd have phi n plus one minus phi n divided by delta t plus, and then you calculate this divergence just at the old time step. If it was Euler implicit, that would be at the new time step. Um, so that's Euler, either implicit or explicit. If this, you might, for the time stepping scheme, it might be Frank Nicholson. So then you'd have phi n plus one minus phi n over delta t plus, so now it's half of the time step n plus half of time step n plus one. Uh, half of the divergence at u, uh, divergence at time level n plus the divergence at time level n plus 1. Uh, so that is Crank Nicholson, also known as the trapezium rule or um, the theta method. And uh, so uh finally semi lagrangian now semi lagrangian is an amazing advection method um you can have really long time steps with semi lagrangian and not only are they stable but they're also quite accurate um but the big problem with semi lagrangian it is not conservative so for semi lagrangian um you discretize instead of the um uh, flux form of the equation that I wrote before. So what I wrote before was d phi by dt plus the divergence of the flux is equal to zero. Um, for, but for semi-Lagrangian, you discretize the Lagrangian form. So that's uh, d phi by dt is equal to zero. And this total derivative d is just defined as the partial derivative in time plus the advection term. No, it's not. It is um, it is defined uh, that the it, it's uh, the advective form. So it's u dot grad phi is equal to zero. And those if as, if the velocity is divergence free, those are the same. Um, and so just if you're just doing linear advection, um, you'd use the analytical solution of the uh, advection equation, and you'd say that phi at time level n at the arrival point is just equal to phi time level n plus one at the departure point. So if you have a a grid like this, and um, now this is, uh, you do, don't really take volumes or areas into account in semi-Lagrangian. Say this is your arrival point, phi, phi arrives 
uh, arrives here uh, and there's been a wind like this and so it's come from, this is the departure point, this is where it was at the previous time step and if you have no sources and sinks um, then fight the arrival time is just equal to fight the departure point. Um, the approximate approximation comes in because this uh, departure point is not at one of the grid points. So you have to interpolate from surrounding grid point values. So phi is known at all of these places. It's not known at the departure point. So you have to interpolate from the grid points onto the departure point. Uh, and usually cubic interpolation is needed to be accurate. If you just do linear interpolation, then the whole thing is first order accurate. Um, and so that is the... Um, a brief description of those three classes of advection schemes.